Tempe Video is not responsible for any damages caused by these makeups or the materials involved. The producers of this video cassette advise that children under 18 get permission from their parents before following the procedures shown in this videotape. Every Halloween, millions of people flock to various costume shops and dime stores in order to find a perfect costume for Halloween. In this tape, we will show you how to put together your own easy-to-apply makeups at home, giving you the chance to design your own personal Halloween masterpiece. I'm Don Pesek, and I will be your host. Guiding you through the procedures will be veteran makeup effects artists Bill Morrison and David Lang. To begin with, here are a few pointers. Number one. Some people may be allergic to some of the materials we will be using in this tape. You can test this by applying a small amount of makeup to your skin first. If irritation occurs, it's advisable not to risk the full makeup. Number two, keep a clean workspace. Makeup is notoriously messy, so protect any surrounding furniture. And be sure to lay down plenty of old newspapers. Also, keep plenty of paper towels handy. Number three, clean up spills quickly before they have a chance to damage something. Number four, liquid latex will not come out of clothing, carpeting, etc., so you should be especially careful with it. Number five, always wear old clothes or protective apron when the makeup is being applied. And number six, always take your time in applying these makeups. Now, here's what you will need to do the makeups. One, latex rubber to use as an adhesive and for various makeup applications. Two, nose putty, which is also known as mortician's wax, molding putty, or derma wax. Number three, gelatin, which is available at your local grocery store. Four, theatrical makeup and or grease paint in the following colors. Red, yellow, green, magenta, black, brown, orange, white, gray, and blue. Five, tooth enamel for rotten teeth effects. Six, a plastic milk jug and an empty 32 ounce cola container. Seven, quarter inch thick foam rubber available in most craft stores which will be used to create prosthetic pieces. Eight, gauze or surgical bandages if you want to do the mummy makeup. Stage blood, flexible sealer which we will be using in our makeups as a base for the nose putty. White or gray colored hairspray to add the finishing touch to some of the makeups. In addition, you will also need these average everyday household items to help you with the applications. One, some old sponges. Two, a pack of cotton swabs. Three, a hair dryer. Four, a thin paintbrush. Five, food coloring. Six, a pair of scissors. Seven, a can of regular hairspray. Eight, mousse or styling gel. Nine, an old pair of sunglasses. Let's start off with a simple technique of making a bruise. Bruises require three basic colors, yellow, red, and blue. Step one, dab yellow makeup in a circular area on your arm. Step two, 
Dab blue makeup over that, being careful to leave an area of yellow around the blue. Blend the blue into the yellow. Step 3. Dab red over that, blending it in with either a dry sponge or your finger. To enhance your makeups, you may use a tooth enamel to give the illusion of every dentist's worst nightmare, rotten teeth. Before you apply the enamel, be sure to thoroughly dry your teeth. After drying your teeth, simply apply the enamel to the surface of your teeth with the short strokes as shown here. Colored hairspray also adds a final touch to many of the makeups you will see here. Colored hairspray should be applied in short bursts with the can tilted at a slight angle and several inches from the subject's hair as shown here. Theatrical makeup is easily removable with soap and water. You may also wish to use cold cream. To remove rubber latex and grease paint, use baby oil. And parents, you may want to supervise the cleanup and make sure that the makeup is being properly removed. Here are the materials you'll need for our first makeup. Pumpkin head. Orange, black, and white makeup. Several sponges. Cotton swabs. Step 1. Spread orange makeup around your face, leaving the area around your eyes clean. Be sure to avoid getting any makeup in your hair. Step 2. Mix in a small amount of white makeup to help spread the orange evenly over your face. This technique will also be used in the following makeups, so it's a good one to practice right now. Step 3. Next, draw an outline of the triangular eye socket pattern with the black makeup. Using a brush or cotton swab and carefully begin to fill it in. Repeat this pattern for your other eye. Step 4. Repeat this same procedure for the pumpkin's nose hole, filling in the triangular pattern with black makeup. Step 5. Outline a pattern around the mouth with black makeup, resembling the characteristic smile of a Halloween pumpkin, and fill this in with black, just as you did with the eye and nose patterns. Be sure to get the lips. Step 6. Begin drawing vertical lines with black makeup and a cotton swab down the contours of your face as shown here. Step 7. Using a dry sponge, carefully blend in a bit of the black into the area around the lines to help create a three-dimensional contoured effect. Lines on the right side of your face should be blended to the right. Repeat this procedure for the left side of your face. Care should be taken not to smear too much of the black makeup into the orange. And that's it. Here's the completed makeup. Here's what you'll need to transform yourself into a fierce, blood-sucking vampire. White, black, and red makeup. Stage blood, sponges and or cotton swabs. Step 1. Lay down a base of white makeup over your entire face, and as always, be careful to avoid your hair in the process. Step 2. Apply red or magenta makeup around your eye sockets as we show here. Step 3. Apply black makeup under both eyes and smooth this in with a dry sponge or cotton swab to achieve the effect of ghastly hollow eye sockets. Step 4. Using a cotton swab, next apply black makeup in the crease of both nostrils as shown here, keeping it as thin as possible for a shadowing effect. Step 5. Do the same to apply black makeup to each side where your nose meets your eyebrows. This will give you the appearance of an enlarged forehead. Step 6. Apply small bits of black makeup with a dry sponge in the hollows of your cheeks, carefully blending it in so that the cheeks look hollow and sucked in. Step 7. Using a cotton swab with some black makeup on it, dab two dots on your neck as shown to simulate a vampire bite. Be sure to smooth out the edges of the makeup, which will help the bites appear raised. Step 8. Use a little stage blood and apply near the corners of your mouth for an unsettling, dripping blood effect. Please be careful not to get any of this mixture in your mouth. Don't forget to add some blood to the vampire bite. Step 9. As a final touch, use a sponge and some black makeup on your lips to give them that certain dead look. And there you have the completed makeup. Now, here's what you'll require for the cat makeup. 
black, white, and yellow makeup, sponges, thin paintbrush, cotton swabs. Step 1. Apply yellow makeup to your face, starting under your eyes and working down and around your face as shown. Once again, you may want to add a bit of white makeup to help spread the yellow makeup around. Step 2. Using black makeup, apply stripes as we demonstrate here by making downward strokes with a cotton swab or brush, then thin them out with a sponge. Step 3. Repeat with two shorter stripes as shown with the first one and thin these strokes down with the sponge as you did before. Finish this with a vertical stripe under the lower lip and up the chin. Step 4. Apply white makeup on your upper lip, under your nose. Step 5. Use black makeup to color your lower lip. Step 6. Continue the cat striping with a stripe that is even with your eyes. Step 7. Using the brush or a cotton swab, you then paint a vertical line down from below the nose to the upper lip, widening it at the bottom and covering the upper lip. Draw a line, as we show here, to separate the white from the yellow. Complete this by dotting whisker marks in the remaining white area. Step 8. Blacken your nose, as we show here, using a cotton swab or brush. Step 9. Finally, draw a pair of horizontal lines, as you can see here, from the nose, and five more lines branching up from the nose. Thin these lines out with a sponge, using downward strokes. And here's what you end up with. In order to transform yourself into a fierce lizard creature, here are the materials you'll need. Green, black, and yellow makeup. Sponges. Cotton swabs. Step 1. Using a cotton swab or a dry sponge, take yellow makeup and draw two vertical lines, even with the corners of your mouth, down to your chest. Step 2. Completely fill in this outlined area with a yellow makeup. Step 3. Draw a series of horizontal lines about three-fourths of an inch apart using a cotton swab and black makeup from under your lower lip and all the way to your chest. Step 4. As we saw earlier with the pumpkin head makeup, make downward strokes with a sponge to blend in the black makeup and create a three-dimensional sculptured effect. Step 5. Use some black makeup to accentuate the lines in step one, and again use a sponge to thin them out. Step six. Begin painting the remainder of the face with green makeup, being careful to spread the makeup as evenly as possible. Remember to use white makeup to help make the green makeup spread easier. And don't forget the lips. Step seven. Using a brush or cotton swab, you then paint circles under each eye, as we show here, using black makeup. You can use the sponge and blend this in for a contoured effect. Step 8. Begin painting another series of vertical lines and then connect them in a spiderweb fashion to create scales. Repeat this for the other side of your face. Step 9. Draw vertical lines down your nose and continue to make scales. And here's the completed lizard makeup. Here's what you'll need to become an alien. Blue, black, and white makeup. Latex rubber, an old pair of sunglasses or sunglass lenses, a hair dryer, cotton swabs, sponges, and a thin paintbrush. Step 1. Dab latex rubber above and below your eyes and dry this with a hair dryer. Be careful not to get any of this into your eyes. Step 2. Put the lens of the sunglasses into this latex base until it sticks. It may help to coat the contact area of the lens itself with rubber latex before doing this, since latex will stick to itself when it is dried and not powdered. Repeat this step for the other eye. Step 3. Spread blue makeup over all of your face, covering all of your exposed skin and the places around your eyes. Dabbing in a bit of white makeup will help even out the color. A clean, even coat of blue is a must for this makeup. Try to get it as near as possible to your hairline as well. Step 4. Use a cotton swab or a thin paintbrush to fill in the areas around your eyes with black makeup on all sides. Step 5. Draw a pair of lines from the inner ends of your eyebrows to meet together as they arch up onto your forehead as we show here, 
using black makeup. You then fill in the eyebrows with black makeup as well. Next, use a sponge to blend the arch in and the point where the arch meets the eyebrows. Step 6. Draw a V-shape from the corner of the nose up to the top of the ear on both sides of your face. Then, use a sponge to shadow these lines downward and connect the V's across the top of the nose. Step 7. Bring a black line down from just above the bottom of the V and down across your cheeks to connect at the chin shape. Step 8. Draw two vertical blade lines down from the bottom of your lip to connect with the line on your chin and shape that. Step 9. Draw two additional lines above where the V's connect to fall at your upper lip and shape it. Step 10. Draw another horizontal line across your nose above the first one and shape it. Step 11. As shown here, finish off drawing the alien lines with an angled line under each eye. Step 12. Use a sponge and some green makeup to color your lips. And here's what you end up with. Here are the materials you'll need to safely transform yourself into a burn victim even Freddy would love. Red, yellow, and purple makeup, latex rubber, stage blood, a hair dryer, sponges, and cotton swabs. Step 1. Dab latex rubber on the areas you want to resemble burns. Dry this with a hair dryer and peel up a bit of the dried latex from your facial skin. Cover the partially peeled latex with an additional layer of latex rubber. Once again, use the hair dryer to dry the latex, then peel it to create burn-like scars. Coat this with another layer of latex and dry. Repeat this procedure for the other side of your face. Step 2. Dab yellow makeup evenly over the burn areas. Step 3. Dab red makeup in blotchy patterns over your face, mainly in the exposed areas of skin not covered by latex. Step 4. Paint black makeup over the red and blend the two colors to even them out. Repeat this procedure for the other side of your face. Step 5. Paint red and black makeup onto your chin, using equal quantities of each to create a charred look. And Step 6. Spread purple makeup over the entire makeup in small blotches. And here's the completed makeup. Here's what you'll need to become a flesh-eating zombie. White, black, and red makeup, latex rubber, stage blood, nose putty, a hair dryer, something to cut the nose putty with, sponges, and cotton swabs. Step 1. Using nose putty, build up a lump on the lower part of your nose and blend in the edges. Use the blunt end of your paintbrush, the edge of your tweezers, or a butter knife to dig a hole in the putty that will represent a wound. Step 2. Next, apply a second clump of putty above the right eye, smoothing the edges into your skin. Then, slice a hole in the putty like you did before to make a wound. Step 3. Dab both nose putty wounds with latex rubber to help seal it. Step 4. Carefully paint in black makeup in the holes you made in the nose putty applications. Step 5. Paint the areas around the nose putty wounds with white makeup. Step 6. Begin dabbing black makeup with a sponge, then add some white and begin lightly blending the colors together. Add white as necessary, especially to highlight the higher areas of your face, such as the cheeks. Cover the face evenly and make sure to fill in all exposed skin areas. Step 7. Apply red makeup into the hollows of your eye sockets, blending it in below the eyes. Step 8. Use a cotton swab to apply streaks of black makeup under the eyes, and use a sponge to blend it into the remaining red makeup all around the eye sockets. Try to get an even blend of black and red. Step 9. Apply black makeup to the cheeks and other areas as shown here to create the sunken look we saw earlier with the vampire makeup. Use the black to shade the area at the top of the nose as shown. Step 10. Dab black makeup lightly around the putty wounds. Step 11. Dab red around the face as seen here to give the makeup a bruised look. And step 12. Apply stage blood to the nose putty wounds. And that's it. 
the following materials will be needed to help in your transformation into a witch. Green, black, and white makeup, a hair dryer, cotton swabs, sponges, styling gel or mousse, latex rubber, flexible sealer, and nose putty. Step 1. First, apply flexible sealer to your nose as a base for the nose putty. Blow it dry with a hair dryer. Step 2. Apply nose putty to your nose over the sealer carefully forming the putty into the shape of a pointed witch's nose. Blend the edges into the skin surrounding this area to hide the edges of the putty. Step 3. Add a small clump of nose putty to the nose for a wart effect as we show here. Step 4. Dab latex rubber over the putty nose and surrounding area to seal the putty. Thicker layers of latex will help prevent damage to the nose. Next, dry the latex with your hair dryer. Step 5. Begin painting the face with green makeup using a dry sponge. By dabbing spots of makeup on your face and then blending them in with a sponge, you can get a clean base coat without using a lot of makeup. As before, add some white makeup to help even out the makeup. Step 6. Begin painting downward strokes of white makeup with a cotton swab, curving them at the cheekbone as we show here. This will give the three-dimensional look of puffed-out cheekbones. Repeat this step for the other side of your face. Step 7. Use white makeup to highlight the very top of the nose, thinning the makeup into the green surrounding it. Step 8. Add more white makeup under your nose, above your eyes, and on your chin to highlight these areas. Step 9. Dab black makeup around the eyes, getting an even blend. Spread this makeup at the ends to get a shading effect. Step 10. Blend some of the black down into the white of the cheekbones and nose, using a dry sponge. Step 11. Use the brush or a cotton swab to blend some of the black into the rest of the makeup. Remember to do this lightly. You're trying to achieve a soft, shadowed effect here. Step 12. Paint black makeup into the creases of your nostrils and blend them lightly with a sponge. Also, apply some black makeup in the space just below your lower lip. Step 13. Use a sponge to shade the darker areas of the makeup, especially in the hollows of your cheeks and your ears. Step 14. Paint in the wrinkles of your forehead with black makeup to shadow these areas and make them more pronounced. Smooth this in with a sponge. Step 15. Paint your lips with black makeup. It helps to rub your lips together as if you were wearing lipstick. Step 16. Use a cotton swab to paint black makeup over the eyebrows, forming a point about one-fourth of an inch from the ends, as we show here. Step 17. As an optional touch, you may want to rub styling gel or mousse into your hair to create a stringy, tangled appearance. And here's the completed makeup. Even an exorcist himself would get the creeps looking at this makeup. And this is what you'll need to do it. Red, black, white, yellow, and blue makeup. A hair dryer, sponges, cotton swabs, a thin paintbrush, something to sculpt the nose putty with, flexible sealer, nose putty, and latex rubber. Step 1. Apply flexible sealer to the left cheek, the nose, and the right cheek as the base for the nose putty to be applied onto. Dry this with a hair dryer. Step 2. Spread nose putty over the nose and thin out the edges. Step 3. Apply the nose putty over your left cheek and thin its edges out as well. Repeat this step for the wound on your right cheek. Step 4. Cover the putty with latex rubber and dry it with a hair dryer as we show here. Step 5. Carefully cut out slices in the putty to resemble wounds. Step 6. Dab white makeup in blotches across your face. Step 7. Dab yellow makeup over the white and in other spots over your face. Step 8. Dab blue makeup specifically around the wound areas. Step 9. Add another layer of white makeup over your face. Step 10. Dab red makeup over the wound areas and in the hollows of your eye sockets. Add black makeup over the red and blend these two colors together evenly. Step 11. 
paint two cracks at the top of the nose with black makeup and blend them as we show here. Step 12. Fill in the cracks of the putty wounds with black makeup. Step 13. Dab some more black makeup in splotches over the whole face, mainly around the wound areas. Step 14. Finally, color the lips in black makeup using a dry sponge. And here's the completed makeup. Here are the necessary materials you'll need to become an updated version of the legendary Frankenstein monster. Gray, black, white, red, and purple makeup. Thread, something to help sculpt the nose putty, such as the blunt end of your thin paintbrush or the edge of your tweezers. A hair dryer, cotton swabs, sponges, a thin paintbrush, latex rubber, flexible sealer, stage blood, and styling gel or mousse. Step 1. Paint flexible sealer on your forehead above the right eye and on your right cheek, and dry it by using your hair dryer. Step 2. Use a flattened piece of nose putty to cover your eyebrow. With your fingers, blend the edges and leave jagged, bumpy pieces on the rest. Carry the putty up above your eye and into the forehead. Repeat this procedure for the second eyebrow. Step 3. Cover the surface area of the putty with rubber latex and dry with a hair dryer. Please be careful not to get any of the latex into your eyes. Step 4. Apply yet more nose putty lumps to the right cheek and above the right eye. These areas will be used to sculpt stitched wounds. Step 5. Next, you cover the new putty-covered areas with latex rubber and dry as you did previously. Step 6. Slice a scar in the putty wounds on the right side of the cheek and left eye, as we demonstrate here. Step 7. Paint black makeup into these three scars with a cotton swab or the thin paintbrush. Step 8. Then, cut a few small pieces of thread and lay them across the wounds to resemble stitches. This is not a necessary step in the makeup, and you can leave it out if you want to. A few dabs of the latex rubber over the wounds will help the thread stay attached. Step 9. Dab more latex rubber over the wounds and dry them with your hair dryer. Step 10. Begin dabbing on gray makeup, starting with your forehead and working downward to your chin, being sure to cover the previously uncovered putty areas so that they blend in with the rest of the makeup. If you don't have any gray makeup, just mix equal portions of black and white makeup to create your own. Be sure to cover the ears and neck for this makeup. Step 11. After that, apply black makeup into your eye sockets with a sponge, blending the edges so that you create a shadow effect. Step 12. Do the same with the remaining hollows of your face, such as your temples and the hollows of your cheeks blending them in to make them appear sunken. Step 13. Add black makeup to the corners of your eyes, blending them in to help create the illusion of raised eyebrows. Step 14. Paint more black makeup into the wounds with a brush or a cotton swab and create subtle shadow effects with a sponge. Step 15. Shadow in the creases of your nostrils and the folds surrounding your nose with black makeup. Step 16. Dab red makeup over the wounds and the area surrounding them to give the wounds a bruised look. To help make this look even more bruised, dab in small amounts of purple makeup as shown in the opening segment. Step 17. Use purple makeup to color in your lips and the area just below them. Use a light touch and remember not to overdo the purple. Step 18. Take some stage blood and begin to apply that in and around the wounds. And step 19, as a final touch, add some hair gel to flatten and grease your hair. And here's the completed Frankenstein monster makeup. Ghastly Ghoul Number 1. Using a small piece of sponge, stipple latex rubber gently onto the subject's left cheek, as shown here, and allow to dry. A hair dryer may be used to help the drying process. The latex will help the nose putty we'll be applying in step two stick to the face. Number two. 
apply a thin lump of nose putty along the cheekbone as shown here. Begin creating a circle on the cheek and use the end of your thin paintbrush to gently cut jagged holes in the putty to create a wound. 3. When you have completed your wound, stipple latex rubber over the entire area to help seal the putty. Allow to dry. Number 4. Using your paintbrush, gently apply black makeup into the center of the wound as shown. Be sure to shadow in the cracks of the wound to make them more pronounced. 5. Apply black makeup under the eye as shown here. Be careful not to get too close to the subject's eye. 6. Begin applying black makeup to the subject's eye socket, slowly tapering the edges to help blend the makeup evenly into the skin as shown here. 7. Using your sponge, begin applying white makeup across both cheekbones blending it into the black makeup gently. Repeat this procedure across the forehead to give it a more pronounced look. Number 8. Using black makeup and your paintbrush, apply small amounts of grease paint to the face to simulate additional wounds as shown. 9. Apply black makeup to the forehead as shown and use a sponge to feather the makeup and create the illusion of larger creases across the nose and eyes. Number 10. Repeat this procedure on the creases of your mouth, leading from the nose to the chin, applying less makeup as you move downward. 11. Use a sponge and your paintbrush to soften the edges of your makeup, gently blending the sides out so they mix more evenly with your face. Finally, you may intentionally mess up the subject's hair, either by hand or by using colored hairsprays or gels to give a more evil appearance. And here's your completed ghastly ghoul makeup. Dracula. Number 1. Begin by applying white makeup to the entire face and neck. You may use a sponge, liquid makeup, or apply it with a stick as shown here. If you are doing the complete makeup, don't forget to make up the hands. As you apply the white makeup, begin spreading it across the face evenly with a sponge. You may find it helpful to have a friend apply the makeup while you spread it. Two. Next, apply a small amount of black makeup to your finger and begin spreading it into the hollows of your eye sockets. Number 3. When finished with Step 2, use a Q-tip and some black makeup to create the widow's peak on the forehead as shown. After you have done this, gently fill in the area with black makeup as shown here. You might want to have a friend do this for you while you go on to do the next step. Number 4. Use the Q-tip to draw a line down the temple of your subject's face, using your finger to gently spread the black makeup back towards your hairline. It may help to apply a small amount of white makeup to help even out the color. 5. Next, dab a small amount of black makeup in the hollow of the cheeks and use a sponge to begin thinning it out to create a shadowed appearance. At the same time, a friend can do the same technique on the eye sockets, again using a small amount of white to touch up any mistakes or help thin out the makeup. 6. Apply a small amount of stage blood to the lip with a Q-tip. Add some plastic fangs from your local dime store and you're done. Here's the completed makeup. Evil Clown 1. To begin this makeup, you'll need to find some thin pieces of foam rubber lying around your house, or purchase some at a nearby home improvement store. Using a pair of scissors, cut out the shapes of our evil clown's mouth as shown here. Now, these pieces are known as appliances, since they will be applied to the face. 2. Find or purchase a set of fake woman's fingernails. We will be using these for teeth. Depending on the type you buy, you may have to use scissors to make them smaller. 3. Stipple latex rubber on your subject's upper lip and begin applying the fingernails as shown. You will find that after several moments of sitting, the latex becomes nearly fully dry and will act as a glue for the teeth. 4. Stipple latex rubber across the upper lip above the teeth with a sponge, covering the area which will be used to apply our upper mouth appliance. When the latex begins to dry, Apply the foam piece and press down all the edges to make sure it sticks. Repeat this procedure for the lower mouth appliance. 
The pieces should just cover the teeth as shown. 5. Use your paintbrush and begin filling in the exposed mouth area with black makeup. You will only want to cover the areas not already covered by the appliances, being sure to avoid the teeth, which we want to stay nice and white. You will also be covering the lips, since our appliance has been constructed in such a way as to create a new set of lips. 6. Apply latex rubber to the upper edges of the appliances as shown, and use smaller pieces of foam rubber to cover the area where the two mouthpieces come together. Apply more latex over the new pieces to seal them and help blend them in. Repeat for the other side as shown. 7. Begin applying white makeup all across the subject's face as shown, avoiding the eye sockets. You will also want to cover the appliances. 8. Use black makeup to fill in the eye sockets as shown in makeup number 12, Dracula. Next, begin to paint arched eyebrows with black makeup and your paintbrush, using upward strokes to simulate a flanged look. Continue painting the black makeup, arching the nose as we've seen before, and moving downward to the tops of our mouth appliances to help give them a raised appearance. 9. While you are applying the black makeup, a friend can begin applying red makeup to the subject's new set of lips, as shown here. 10. Using blue makeup, begin painting triangles above and below each eye as commonly seen with circus clowns. But be sure this area is completely filled in with blue. 11. Finally, paint the tip of the subject's nose red while continuing to create shadowing across the face. And here's the evil clown makeup. <laughs> Phantom. 1. To begin, use a small piece of nylon from an old pair of pantyhose and glue one end of it to the tip of your nose with latex rubber. Allow to dry, then stretch the nylon upwards to the top of your nose using more latex. You may have to hold it in place to make it stay. The idea behind this concept is that used by Lon Chaney Sr. in the classic film Phantom of the Opera. 2. Next, use nose putty to build around and over the nylon to aid in the process of making an enlarged nose. You will have to practice sculpting procedures to do this accurately and make sure that you blend the edges into the skin. When you're finished, apply more liquid latex over the putty to help seal it and allow to dry. 3. Using white makeup and a sponge, begin spreading the makeup all across the subject's face with the exception of the eye sockets. Be sure to cover the nose gently so you won't bruise the putty. 4. Use a Q-tip and some black makeup to begin painting an enlarged nostril over your real one as shown here. When finished, you may add black to the nostril crease to add shadowing. 5. Use the black makeup to hollow in the eye sockets as we've seen with the other makeups again carefully blending the edges into the skin. 6. Use your paintbrush to paint black makeup into the creases running from your nose down to the mouth area, gently spreading them outwards for a shadowed appearance. 7. Next, use upward strokes of your paintbrush along the upper and lower lips to give your face an aged look, as shown here. 8. Repeat the technique of shading the forehead creases as seen here and in the other makeups. Add some fake teeth from a dime store and you have the finished phantom makeup. Old Man 1. Begin by using a sponge to spread liquid latex all across the face as shown, especially in the cheeks and jowls. Repeat this procedure on the subject's neck, stretching the skin while the latex dries to help cause aging wrinkles. 2. Next, use a dark brown makeup and your paintbrush to create wide lines down the neck on both sides of the face. These will become wrinkle lines later on. 3. Use your paintbrush, still with the brown makeup, to paint in the creases of your mouth as shown here. Work your way upwards, painting in the nose creases, and finally draw a half circle under the eye socket as shown, extending the line back down the side of your face. You should end the line at the side of the eye branching it off into several smaller lines resembling wrinkles. 4. Repeat for the other side of the face. Then, begin using a light brown makeup across the face to help blend in the darker makeup. Work your way up across the forehead, down the other side of the face, and finally to the neck, 
gently blending the light brown into the dark brown. Caution must be used not to smear too much of one color into the other. 5. Use the paintbrush and begin painting in wrinkle lines on the forehead where the subject's natural wrinkles fall. Now These should consist of several straight horizontal lines along with a pair of vertical lines leading down to the nose as shown. Carefully blend the lines into the rest of the face, adding small amounts of white makeup to help the blending procedure. 6. Begin using the paintbrush to paint random spots across the face, thinning them out at the edges to create the illusion of liver spots, as shown. In addition, you will continue to blend in other parts of the face, as shown. 7. As shown in makeup number 14, Phantom, use the paintbrush and light brown makeup to paint age wrinkles on the upper and lower lips. Offset these with white makeup this time and carefully blend the two together. 8. Begin using small amounts of white makeup across the face to add highlighting. Key areas as shown are the creases of the mouth, the highest point on the cheekbones, and the bridge of the nose and lips. Be careful, it's easy to overdo the white makeup, necessitating reapplying the two shades of brown. Finally, use white makeup or hair color to tint the sides of the head as shown. For the full effect, it's recommended to use white hairspray and to use the same techniques shown here to make up the hands. Old clothing will add to the final effect. Robot 1. We'll begin this makeup by drawing the two shapes shown here on a plastic one-gallon milk jug. Use a permanent black marker for best results. With a pair of scissors, carefully puncture the jug outside of your drawn area and carefully cut the pieces out. The final touch will come by painting the pieces with silver spray paint. 2. Apply liquid latex rubber to the subject's right cheek with a sponge, as shown. 3. Repeat this procedure on the upper right temple, using your plastic piece as a guide. As the latex dries, firmly apply the pieces to the head. 4. Use nose putty to begin forming a circular wound around the perimeter of your cheek where the latex rubber was painted. You will be creating a wound. A friend can help by starting to do the same around the plastic piece, carefully sculpting what will appear to be skin rising up and over the fake metallic piece. Cover with latex and allow to dry. 5. Use a paintbrush and black makeup to begin painting around the edge of your fake wounds, thinning the edges out to give an airbrushed look, as shown. Begin painting in a bit of red makeup, mixing it in lightly with the black to give the illusion of a bruised wound. Do the same for the cheek wound. 6. Finally, add some Terminator-style sunglasses for a makeup that would make even Arnold himself proud. <laughs> Mummy. 1. Begin by applying liquid latex all across the cheeks and jaw of your subject. Allow to dry. Next, stipple dark brown makeup into the hollows of your eye socket as we've seen in previous makeups. A friend can also help you get a head start by beginning to stipple light brown makeup over the latex areas. 3. Begin carefully grabbing up some small sections of the dried latex, tearing them slightly to create what appear to be small wounds in the face. Use this videotape as a guide. 4. Continue stippling the dark brown makeup across the face, bringing it down from the eye sockets and onto the cheekbones on one side to create a somewhat distorted look. Shade in the folds of your subject's nose and part of the lip, adding small amounts of red makeup to help achieve a bruised look. 5. Continue shading, using a Q-tip in spots to create smaller blotches of red and brown areas. We are trying to achieve a more bruised appearance for this makeup. 6. Using white makeup, highlight the highest point on your cheekbones and nose. 7. Use your paintbrush and some black makeup to begin drawing lines on the right side of the subject's face, which for this makeup will appear more rotted. Lines should fill in the creases of the eye socket, nose, and lips as shown. Repeat what we've seen before by adding wrinkles to the upper and lower lips. Repeat all of these techniques for the other side of the face, but make them more uneven this time. 8. Next, begin applying gauze bandages over the face and neck using our pattern shown here. We have used small amounts of makeup to darken the bandages for our rotted look. Using an airbrush or similar device works even better. 
be sure not to cover too much of the makeup on the face. 9. Use smaller pieces of the gauze bandages to stick between the head wrapping for a dangling appearance. Once completed, you're ready to play the mummy. Swamp Creature 1. Using the techniques shown in makeup number 13, the evil clown, cut out sections of thin foam rubber as shown here. We'll be creating a two-part nose piece, which will be applied as part of the Swamp Creature makeup. 2. To begin, apply liquid latex rubber over the bridge of the nose and along the cheekbones. As the latex begins to dry, position your nose appliance as shown and attach it accordingly. 3. Next, apply more latex rubber on the front of your nose and repeat step 2 using the smaller piece of our nose appliance. Stipple latex on both pieces at their joints carefully pinching them together as they dry to create one uniform piece. 4. For the next procedure being shown, stipple a thin amount of latex rubber on the palm of your hand. As it begins to dry, carefully peel up the edges and carefully attach it as shown to the subject's face, stretching it out as you do so. Use one large piece to stretch all the way across the nose appliance, covering it all up. 5. Begin using smaller wads of drying latex to attach to the sides of the face. Some of the latex can be rolled and applied as shown to achieve the appearance of small tree roots growing out of the face. Their pattern should be random for optimum effect. 6. Begin using green makeup and a sponge to paint the face, letting a friend help if available by continuing to add latex rolls. Use a paintbrush to paint in the nose area itself, which will be harder to paint by sponge. 7. Take a break from the green makeup and shadow in the eye sockets as we've seen in most of the other makeups. 8. Next, use your paintbrush to begin adding streaks of black makeup among the latex roots and to help add the appearance of additional roots beneath the first layer of skin as shown here. 9. Resume covering the face with the green makeup, occasionally shading in with black makeup as necessary. By now, you should have a feel for many of the makeup procedures which should be unnecessary to repeat. And here's the completed Swamp Creature makeup. <laughs> creature. 1. For this makeup, which will be a fly type creature, our first step will be to create clear plastic eyepieces to simulate the eyes. Find an empty, clear plastic 2-liter soda bottle around your house and use it to trace two circular shapes as seen here. 2. Next, use a pair of scissors to cut the shapes out, using care not to cut yourself in the process. 3. Once the two eyepieces have been cut out, use a permanent black marker to begin drawing honeycomb-type patterns on the inside of the lenses as shown. Be sure not to make them too close together or it will be difficult to see. 4. Use a colored marker of your choice, we're using red, and color the entire inside of the eyepieces. Be sure to do this on the inside of the lens. By doing so, you'll have a clean outside which will appear more natural. 5. To begin the makeup, apply liquid latex rubber around the left eye, being careful to avoid the eyebrow. Use one of your plastic eyepieces as a guide. Repeat for the other side of the face, and before the latex fully dries, apply each of the eyepieces as shown. 6. In the event of problems with the eyepieces adhering, which is not uncommon, use some small pieces of surgical tape as shown to help them stay. 7. Once the eyepieces are on firmly, use more latex and a sponge to stipple around the outside of the pieces and allow to dry. 8. Next, we'll learn how to use gelatin. The type we'll be using is Knox Unflavored Gelatin, which can be found in any grocery store. It is the core ingredient for Jell-O brand gelatin, but is thicker and comes without any flavor. Mix the gelatin using a small amount of hot water in a bowl. If you are in doubt, follow the mixing instructions on the package. 9. Before the gelatin has a chance to harden, which is rather quick, begin to slowly spread it over the eye areas as shown here. Be sure not to let the gelatin drip over the eyepieces themselves. Instead, we're trying to begin a building procedure by applying the gelatin to the forehead, carefully working it around the edges of the eyepieces and under them, over the nose and cheekbones. 10. To aid in building up the gelatin, use a small wad of cotton as shown. 
under the cheekbones, along the nose, and above the eyes on the forehead. This should then be followed by the application of more layers of gelatin. Continue building up the gelatin as shown here. 11. When the gelatin has hardened, it will feel somewhat rubbery. You should then begin to coat its surface with liquid latex and allow it to dry. This will help seal the gelatin and protect it from damage while wearing it. Now, you shouldn't use a hair dryer for this procedure, as the heat may melt some of the gelatin. 12. Once the latex has dried, cut out two foam rubber antennas as shown here, and use some liquid latex to apply them. By painting the ends of the antennas and then applying them, you will get a better stick. Latex sticks to itself very well. 13. After the makeup has sat for a few moments to help seal it, begin applying green makeup to the face with a sponge as shown. Apply it with light pressure so as not to damage the gelatin and cotton buildup below. You will most likely have to make several coats depending on the makeup you are using. 14. Use your paintbrush and black makeup to begin filling in the lower points in the gelatin to create a cracked look as shown here. Spread this makeup upwards, covering all the areas that appear lower than the surface of the gelatin. 15. Use a Q-tip and some black makeup to cover over the lips. And here's the completed creature. <laughs> Gargoyle. 1. We'll begin our final makeup by cutting out a foam rubber piece to create a nose appliance as shown. Two, begin the makeup by applying liquid latex to the tip of the nose. Fold a piece of foam rubber over the nose as shown and hold it until it sticks to the latex. Three, apply more latex over the edges of the nose appliance and the nose itself to help seal it and hold it firmly in place. Four, next, use two smaller pieces of foam rubber to recreate the folds of the nose as shown, applying them with liquid latex. Cover them with more latex as shown. 5. Starting with the nose, apply brown makeup with a sponge being particularly careful not to damage the nose appliance. Spread outward to the cheeks and jaw, occasionally mixing in a small amount of white makeup to help blend it. 6. Using your paintbrush and black makeup, begin painting in creases from your subject's nose to the mouth as you've done with other makeups. Be sure to get the creases of the lips. As always, shadow in the upper part of the nose and eyes as shown. 7. Add to the makeup with your paintbrush by painting in extended arched eyebrows over your real ones. Fan the makeup upwards to help create a, a more evil look. Repeat this procedure for the other side. 8. Next, begin using a Q-tip with dark brown makeup to create small spots all across the face in a random pattern. 9. Finally, muss up the subject's hair as shown. Here's the final completed gargoyle makeup. There you have it. We here at Suburban Tempe Company wish you great success with your makeups and, of course, a frightfully good Halloween. Until next time, I'm Don Pesek. Thank you for joining us.